Sirloin steaks, ham hocks, roast beef, pork shoulder. Pork. Oh, the mutton chops and chickens must be in your bag, Harriet. Dig them out. Yes, sir. But I still say I think we ought to buy our own home freezing unit, Daddy. I don't think it's right of you to sneak around here hiding our meat in the school cafeteria freezer. Well, what's wrong with it? Does it cost the school anything extra to freeze my meat along with its own? Not a penny. But the inconvenience. What inconvenience? After school, I simply decide what we're going to have for dinner, remove it from this freezer, and by the time I get it home, it's nicely defrosted. Now, uh, hand me my mutton chops and hush. Mother thinks we ought to buy that freezing unit the man showed us in the store yesterday. For $380? It would be cheaper to send our meat to the North Pole. Here are the mutton chops, Daddy. Let's get it over with. All right, now, you stand guard, Harriet. If any other faculty members catch on to my little dodge, they're liable to demand equal rights for their meat. Now, I wouldn't want to be crowded out of a good thing. Yeah. Keep the yeah. sharp lookout. Hold it, Daddy. Will you? Oh, somebody coming? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good morning, Miss Frost. Good morning, Harriet, Mr. Conklin. The custodian's ill, so Walter and I are making his rounds for him. Yeah, we just wanted to check and make certain the freezer door is closed. What brings you down here, sir? Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, uh... Well, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that my school has one of the finest freezers in the country. So I frequently come down here to uh, inspect it. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> this freezer is very close to my heart. Maybe that's why his heart is so... <laughs> it is a dandy freezer, Mr. Conklin. Harriet, aren't you supposed to be hall monitor this morning? Golly, I forgot. Oh, excuse me, Daddy, but I'm late. Oh, by the way, Miss Brooks, we saw Mr. Boynton in the appliance store yesterday, and he bought himself a new stove. He's got four burners. So have I, but he never turns them on. <laughs> he doesn't like to cook at my place. Mother sent Daddy and me over there to buy a home freezer, but Daddy figures it's cheaper if we take our meat. On your horse! <laughs> What's in the basket, Miss Conklin? My lunch. <laughs> <laughs> now then... Miss Brooks, it is with considerable horror that I recall the last time you pinch hit for our custodian. You repaired some doorknobs, remember? I remember. Every time you went to open a door, the knob came away in your hand and you fell flat. What? <laughs> I trust you will have mercy on me today, Miss Brooks. You see, the Board of Education has asked that I report for my annual physical examination and I would like to get there in fairly good shape. Well, you can depend on me, Mr. Conklin. I'll stay as far away from you as possible, starting immediately. Come on, Walter. Yeah. Bye, Mr. Conklin. Goodbye. Why bother going back? Well, it never hurts to recheck, Walter. You see, it was open. <laughs> Going to lunch, Walter? Yes, ma'am. I just asked Harriet to join me, but she's upset about her old man. Mr. Cochran's been gone since early this morning. <laughs> Hasn't he been in his office? No, ma'am. Harriet hasn't seen hide nor scalp of him. <laughs> well, that's funny. If he had an off-campus appointment, surely he'd have told Harriet about it. No, no, not necessarily. She had a little argument with him this morning, and Mr. Conklin got pretty hot under the collar. Oh. <laughs> well, he's probably cooled off by now. <laughs> I don't think there's any cause for concern, Walter. He'll turn up sooner or later. He always does. <laughs> it's the old story. Every silver lining has a cloud. <laughs> Are you ready for the biology lab, Miss Brooks? Guilty, Your Honor. I haven't seen much of Mr. Boynton lately, you know. His time is being pretty thoroughly monopolized. Yeah, I know. By Miss Daisy Enright. 
I understand she's been knitting things for the bashful one. Sweaters and socks. What's her angle? Oh, that's obvious. She's dropping stitches and subtle hints about what a handy housewife she'd made. Her game is as old as the hills, Walter. More than one can play it, though. What do you mean? Harriet gave you an opening you could drive a truck through, Miss Brooks. She said that Mr. Boynton bought a new stove yesterday, right? Right. Well, you just listened to old Dr. Cupid. Now, I ask you, who is the handy little potential housewife who is going to volunteer to cook the first meal on Mr. Boynton's new stove? I have a lady, Doctor. <laughs> oh, what are you waiting for? Go get something simmering. And don't spare the lard. <laughs> if this works out, Doc, we'll name our first baby lamb chop after you. <laughs> How do you like this sweater Miss Enright made for me? Doesn't it look like something out of Esquire? <laughs> out of Esquire by Seabiscuit. <laughs> oh, you're such a doll. But then, you know, we see each other so seldom that just the sight of you gives me the feeling that it's old home week. <laughs> a very old home week. <laughs> well, thanks, Miss Enright. There's no reason we shouldn't see more of each other. After all, science has discovered antidotes for everything these days. <laughs> antidotes? Oh, she's so playful, Mr. Boynton. Suppose you show her the gloves I knitted you and the hanky I made. Oh, they're right here. <laughs> this isn't my birthday or anything, but Miss Enright explained, being the domestic type, she likes to keep busy making things. Oh, I think that's a wonderful quality in a girl. Don't you? In a girl, yes. <laughs> <laughs> is a lovely handkerchief, though. Thank you, darling. It's all hand-sewn. <laughs> yes, indeedy, I did it all with my own little needle. <laughs> oh, do you use a needle? <laughs> I thought maybe you just threaded your own claws. <laughs> claws? Now, Don't just... Don't pay any attention to her, Mr. Boynton. She probably got up on the wrong side of her broom this morning. <laughs> running along. I uh, understand you have a lunch date with Mr. Boynton, so I presume you want to be alone. Well, I don't know. I do. Bye. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Mr. Boynton, don't forget to drop by one night, and while I'm doing my knitting, you can enjoy my brand new television set. You know, there's some fabulous shows. Oh, I know, and with some great stars, too. <laughs> Gosh, a few years ago, when I bought my first set with a 10-inch screen, there wasn't anything to watch but puppets. Oh, yes, I know. I know just what you mean. Yes, in those days, I remember when I was in my teens, there weren't very many stars on television. <laughs> when you were in your teens, there weren't many stars on the flag. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Miss Brooks. I don't think you were very civil. Who's civil in the Civil War? <laughs> oh, let's forget about Barbara Fritchie. How do you feel about lunch? Well, frankly, it's been so warm in here all morning, I'd settle for something cool. But all I could handle would be an ice cream cone. An ice cream cone? Well, fine. That'll leave you with a big appetite for the dinner I'm going to cook for you. You want to cook dinner for me? Well, why not? Being a domestic type, I love to cook dinner for somebody, especially somebody like a man. <laughs> but you know, I wish I could cook dinner on a new stove just once. Say, it's odd that you should mention that. I bought a new stove just yesterday. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, I mean it. I even borrowed Mr. Conklin's tool chest so that I can install it myself. It's all set up in my kitchen. Oh, isn't that the most amazing coincidence? You actually mean you have a new stove in your kitchen? May I never lead another troop of Boy Scouts to Crystal Lake? <laughs> Well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to forget about the stove I was thinking of and cook dinner on your new stove. <laughs> and it won't cost you a thing, Mr. Boynton. I'm going to do all the shopping. Oh, well, no. I don't want to put you to a lot of expense, Miss Brooks, particularly since I could have dinner on Mr. Conklin. On Mr. Conklin? Well, yes, I bought him lunch yesterday, so he reciprocated by inviting me to dinner at his place tonight. Well, tell him you'll take a rain check. Mm. All right, I'll do it. Oh, you won't find him in his office right now. For some reason, he's been missing ever since Miss Brooks. Yeah? Miss Brooks, you've done it again. 
I've done what again, Walter? Well, while I was making the noon rounds for our custodian, I distinctly heard our beloved principal calling for help from inside the cafeteria freezer. <laughs> inside the freezer? Well, why didn't you let him out? What, and get myself killed? <laughs> the honor of springing him, Mr. Uston. Walter, you're a gentleman and a coward. <laughs> opportunity of a lifetime? No, indeed. The head of the board has decreed that all local principals are to convene once a month to exchange ideas on operational procedure. These meetings will be presided over by that principal whom Mr. Stone will select tomorrow afternoon. After the physical exams? Oh, precisely. And since the job carries with it a great deal of extra work, not to mention prestige, and a bit of added remuneration, Mr. Stone will make his selection largely on the basis of physical fitness. So you want to pass your physical with flying colors? Exactly. And unless I steer clear of you, I'm afraid those colors are going to be black and blue. <laughs> so once again, Miss Brooks, I beg of you, go easy on me, won't you? <laughs> oh, you can depend on me, Mr. Conklin. Now, you just relax, sir, and take it easy. I'll move this over where you can reach it, and you won't have to... Oh, forgive me, sir. I'm so sorry. Did it, did it get your foot? That's quite all right. I have another one. Now, if you will kindly vacate the premises. Yes, Mr. Carpenter. Yes. Uh, Taylor said your suit will be dry enough for pressing in about an hour, sir. Uh, oh, hi, Miss Brooks. How are you, Mr. Barnes? Oh, I can't kick. Neither can Mr. Conklin. <laughs> of course, it was an accident, but you but see, Miss I was Miss Brooks is preparing me for my physical examination. <laughs> In view of my condition, Boynton, I hope you'll take a rain check on that dinner invitation for this evening. Of course, Mr. Conklin. It so happens Miss Brooks has offered to cook dinner for me tonight on my new stove. Now, I bought it yesterday, as you know. Yes, yes, I was present at the time. Uh, you might be interested to learn that I called that appliance store a few moments ago, Miss Brooks. Now, don't ask me why, but I have decided 
to purchase a home freezing unit. How splendid, Mr. Parker. How big is your freezer? Don't be don't build up your hopes, Miss Brooks. It's far too small to hold me. Oh, oh, by the way, Boynton, I'd like to install it myself, so I wish you'd return that tool chest you borrowed. Oh, yes, sir. It's still in the kitchen. Oh, perhaps after dinner, Miss Brooks and I could return uh, it. Never mind. <laughs> I'll pick it up at your place after school. Now, if you folks will run along, I have to take my high blood pressure pills. Oh, here, let me help you, Mr. Packer. Here's your glass. Thank you. Oh. I'll uh, drop round between five and six, boy. Say when, Mr. Conklin. before midnight. Oh, we'd better hurry, Mrs. Davis. Mr. Boynton should be back in about 15 minutes. And I don't want him to discover why I insisted that he catch a matinee today. I think it was smart of you to get rid of the bashful goon. <laughs> so I could sneak over and cook his dinner. Of course, after you get married, you'll have to tell him you're not much of a cook. <laughs> By then, who cares? <laughs> You're right, dear. After marriage, all a girl needs is a lipstick and a good can opener. <laughs> and if she has the right lipstick, she doesn't even need a can opener. <laughs> oh, you certainly did a wonderful job on that turkey, Mrs. Davis. I started cooking it at home the minute you phoned me from school. We'll have to reheat it for about ten minutes, though. Oh? Where are the matches? Oh, we don't need any matches. The booklet says that all these burners light automatically. <laughs> there we are. Well, I'll set the temperature at 350 degrees. You think that'll be hot enough for you? Yes. <laughs> Until Mr. Boynton finishes dinner. <laughs> well, I'd better go in and finish setting the table now. And thanks for all the help you gave me, Mrs. Davis. Don't mention it, dear. He might get ideas if we watch some wrestling on TV. Oh, honey. <laughs> honey, the light blew out in the kitchen. It's quite dark in there. Oh, well, everything's practically set here, Mrs. Davis. I'll have Mr. Boynton change the bulb as soon as he gets in. Speak of the Boynton. Oh, Mrs. Davis, you've got to make a sneaky exit. If he sees you here, he'll never believe I cooked that dinner. Stand behind the door. Oh, hi. Have you been waiting long? For years. <laughs> I mean, just a few minutes, Mr. Boynton. See how prettily the table is set. Go ahead, take a look. I'll shut the door. Lovely. <laughs> when I closed it, I threw a slow curve. <laughs> Did you catch a matinee, Mr. Boyd? No, I spent the time visiting with Mr. Grimaldi. He oh. lives in the apartment directly below. His wife's expecting a baby any minute now. A baby? Oh, isn't that sweet? I just love babies. I guess that's because I'm the domestic type. <laughs> that's probably why I like to cook, too. Someday, I'd just like to have a baby and cook. <laughs> Not the same day, of course. <laughs> oh, I just finished cooking a turkey for you. What? A real, live turkey? He's dead now. <laughs> that is, he didn't put up much of a fight when I stuffed him. <laughs> I, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, Miss Brooks, but I wish you hadn't gone to all that expense on my account. When you consider that I could have had dinner on Mr. Conklin. Oh, forget it, Mr. Boyne. It's my treat. I'm going to turn the oven down in a minute. Oh, by the way, the, the light burned out in the kitchen. Would you change the bulb for me? Sure thing. There's some more bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Miss Brooks, when you turned the oven on, are you sure the match reached the gas jet? <laughs> what match? 
The booklet said that all those burners lit automatically. Well, not till I can install them. Oh, let's get some fresh air in here. <laughs> Kitchen's oh. loaded with gas. <laughs> No, we, we can't just let it go on escaping. I'll turn off the oven. Oh, don't be foolish. You might stumble in that dark kitchen. We'd better call the fire department. They'll come over with maps. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello, operator. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mr. Grimaldi, but you'll have to get off the line. Uh, but, uh, but we... Mr. Grimaldi said he thinks the baby's due and he's trying to reach the doctor. Well, I don't blame him. Look, Mr. Grimaldi, we're expecting a blessed event here, too, and... I've got to call the fire to... Yes, I know, but... Well, but... You just... He says that the, the nurse said she'd have the doctor on the line in just a few seconds. Well, we'll hang on so that we can place our call as soon as you hang up. Oh, and congratulations, Mr. Grimaldi. I hope you have a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he must have stepped out for a minute. Let's see, where did he say he left that tool chest? The kitchen. <laughs> oh, great. No light. Don Manches haven't defrosted yet. <laughs> well, there must be one dry one in this box. Well, we can't wait any longer. I'll have to use the payphone down the hall. Somebody in the kitchen? It is I, Alfred Conklin. I'm trying to find a dry mat so I can see my tool chest. Mr. Conklin, I just canned myself. 